For introduction, I'm Dr. Osborne and uh, Ms. Taylor, our nutrition tech, and I have put together a, a gut health talk uh, for this evening, and it's really to just give you more information about it. Uh, we've been getting more and more information uh, about nutrition and, and how to help people, and the gut health is really coming to the surface as being one of the most important parts of nutrition. Uh, getting the testing done, uh, and then getting on the right products, the right food, the right diet, uh, because your gut health, as we'll discover in a little while, affects everything. We want to talk mainly about energy, immune system, and anti-aging. Uh, there really isn't anti-aging. It's slowing down the aging <laughs> process or not allowing it to progress faster than it should be. So, but the buzz term is anti-aging in today's world. So just a little bit about me. Obviously, I've been a chiropractor for 30-some years now. <laughs> and uh, uh, I have to think it's been about eight years ago now. About eight years ago now, I'd always been very healthy, very vibrant, had an incredible immune system. And I got to the point where I actually thought I might be dying. I didn't know what was going on, uh, depression, anxiety, chronic fatigue, uh, no, no get up and go. I, I mean, I, I've been a go-getter all my life and I just wasn't me at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I obviously have the uh, access to all the great chiropractic care uh, that I can get and uh, other uh, health professionals. and. Uh, nobody could seem to figure out what it was. I finally went to someone who specialized in nutrition and she figured out that I had Lyme. And because of that, my immune system was run down, mm -hmm. my uh, digestive system was a mess, it was affecting my heart and, and on, down the, on down the road. So that really is what started me in the process of getting well and getting healthy again. And so that's when I really started studying nutrition and how that can be affecting us. And what I've learned over time is that uh, in today's environment, uh, the level of the nutrition in our food, the toxins that we take in, uh, everything is affecting us and it's certainly affecting our gut health. But here's what we're finding out, whether it's uh, hormonal issues, uh, even, uh, brain fog, things like that, uh, it really comes down to the gut first. Mm -hmm. And if the gut is not working correctly, it can be causing problems all over the place. And uh, autoimmune uh, disorders, you guys have probably heard of that. It's, it's a, a very common thing now. Uh, it might be more of a pandemic than COVID uh, of what's going on there. But cancer, heart issues, uh, liver problems, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, rheumatoid arthritis, brain fog, memory issues, uh, it, it really all comes down to the gut. And the gut is the core source of inflammation. Mm -hmm. And you guys have probably heard that. The big no-no is inflammation. Inflammation is the start of every disease process. Well, if the gut gets inflamed, then it's going to start causing inflammatory processes all over the body. So what are we going to cover tonight? Well, how your gut affects your health, your overall health, your energy levels, your immune system, uh, aging, uh, your brain, and we're going to talk some about the testing and what that looks like, uh, the type of diet you should be looking at, SRT, that's stress response testing, uh, we do here in the office, and that's uh, another form of testing we do. And what can you do about it? What is SRT? Sorry. Okay, stress, re stress response testing, and, and we're going to talk about okay. it a little bit later uh, to let you know what that is. But good question, because that's not a common thing out there, yeah. right? So we're going to look at that, and obviously the types of testing from the SRT. Uh, we have blood testing. We have stool testing and kind of gross to think about, but the amount of information we get from that is amazing. So here's my corny joke of the night for you, is this is going to be the crappiest talk I've ever given, okay? <laughs> so 
<laughs> a GI ecology or your microbiome uh, eats what you eat. So the microbiome, what is that? That's essentially all the little uh, microbes and pathogens and bacteria that are in your gut, okay? And there's millions of them in there, okay? Mm -hmm. But they have to stay balanced. That microbiome is kind of like a community, okay? And so that community has to stay balanced. Uh, just like our communities have to stay balanced. And so the microbiome, when we say that word tonight, that's what you can think about. It's just the environment in your gut, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what's living in there. And it's kind of weird to think about that, but we have millions and millions of living things in our gut, and they have to be there for us to be healthy. And we'll learn a little bit more about that. So that's what the microbiome is. And uh, there's... a uh, Trillions of microorganisms out there. There's between 15 and 36,000 different species that can reside in your gut, and they have to be in balance. Uh, and <laughs> we'll talk about it a little bit more, but uh, later on. But just our toxic environment and the foods we eat, uh, the drugs that we take, all those things come into play, and it makes it very, very difficult for your gut to stay balanced. So, dysbiosis, there's a new word for you. So if you haven't heard this before, what is dysbiosis? Well, biosis is gonna be that microbiome. Dys means it's out of balance or it's not working the way it should. So dysbiosis is an overgrowth of one or more uh, of the favorable mi microbes, yeast or other organisms uh, a lack of the friendly flora that we should have, uh, kind of in the neighborhood uh, called the microbiome. So what's in the neighborhood of your gut? There's got to be good guys. There's got to be bad guys. There's got to be the, the uh, organisms that are supposed to be in there, and they have to be in the right balance for it to work correctly. And a big thing in today's world of nutrition especially is probiotics, right? Everybody's heard of probiotics, probably have taken probiotics at some time in your life. But the big thing with probiotics, our guts are so messed up that almost anybody that takes a probiotic will say, that helped. But sometimes that is not your best friend mm -hmm. because we will actually do the testing and find out that you have too many of the good probiotics in your system and by taking more and more probiotics, you're, it's the good guys, but it's throwing it out of balance in there. Mm -hmm. And we have to maintain balance in there. So, there's a lot of things that we could talk about, but most people understand fungus or yeast or what is called candida albicans. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that one tonight. This could be, this could be any of those 15,000 species that we could pick out. But... This one is very, very common. And so it's, it's a normal fungus, okay, candida or yeast, right? It's in breads, it's in, it's in other foods we have. When it's in very small amounts, that's great. But yeast is opportunistic, right? So you put yeast in an environment where it can thrive and it does what? Exactly the same thing as when you put the yeast in the bread dough and warm it up and it just multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. So people get candida, <coughs> excuse me, into their system and then it starts causing problems down the road. So essentially it's uh, the human body, 98.6 degrees, moisture, sugar, and what happens? Right? We're like a human petri dish, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that yeast can multiply and multiply in there and cause problems. So when you get a, a candida overgrowth or infection, if you will, uh, like I said earlier, it can affect everything. It's not just your gut. It's not just uh, women getting yeast infections, the female organs. It's not just getting athlete's feet on your, on your toes or your toenails getting, getting fungus on them. This affects your brain. It can cause food sensitivities, digestive problems, liver problems, itchy dry skin, 
Obviously, like thrush, you've maybe seen people that have the white tongue, bad breath and a white tongue, that's candida. And as I said, athlete's feet, uh, vaginal infections that go along with that. The gut-brain connection. Uh, this is another thing that's really coming to the forefront in healthcare today. And they are now calling the gut the second brain, okay? And the reason for that, the gut, the microbiota, the neighborhood, the microbiome plays a vital role in not only physical but psychological health because of the neural network. There's a neural network called the enteric nervous system. So a lot of us have heard of the central nervous system, the spinal cord, and the brain, and then the peripheral nervous system. But there is an enteric nervous system. It's got about 100 million nerves found lining the gut. So there's a ton of information being sent out and exchanged and controlled by the gut itself that affects your immune system, that affects your thinking, your brain, uh, really all of your physiology and affecting your brain obviously can affect your psychology. And so the gut-brain connection is a big factor that comes into this, even when we're talking about just candid, candida in the, in the gut. So it's opportunistic, right? So uh, candida is a fungus. Uh, it's everywhere. It's there in small amounts, but it is opportunistic. And what does that mean? Just like any other virus or bacteria that... If, it can, if your immune system is down and your body is creating a, a haven for that, guess what? It's gonna take up residence, okay? It, it's like a squatter, okay? It's not leaving. It's not leaving because it's, it, it's got a good environment, things are good, and it's gonna be there. So uh, under certain conditions, whether it's fungal, bacteria, viral, whatever it may be, it can occur uh, and prol proliferate in ex excessive amounts. When it gets in excessive amounts, that's going to lead to obviously digestive problems. People can have diarrhea, constipation, other digestive issues, but uh, itchy skin, uh, vaginal yeast infections recurring, uh, nail uh, fungal infections, and the list goes on and on. But what, what creates this environment? Why do we have this environment going on? Well, chronic food sensitivities, all right? Believe it or not, we're probably, everybody sitting in this room, no matter how great your diet is, probably has a food sensitivity that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. And it may be an extremely healthy food or what's considered an extremely healthy food, like beets or lettuce or asparagus. And guess what? <clears throat> it's causing inflammation in your system because you have developed a food sensitivity to it. Maybe from just eating too much of it, maybe because you do have some leaky gut going on that we'll discuss in a few minutes. Antibiotics, okay, antibiotics ruin your microbiome because mm -hmm. you, you know, we get whatever infection, the doctors uh, put you on antibiotics for that and that's fine, it may have taken care of whatever other bacterial infection you may have, but at the same time, it destroys a lot of the good microbiome in your gut, and now it's out of balance. So many times you'll hear people, I was on a course of antibiotics, and then a month or two later, now my digestive tract's all screwed up, and I can't figure out why. And so that's what's going on. In fact, all medications have some effect on that microbiome. High sugar, refined carbs, and lectins. Well, we're in the U.S., so no one in the United States has a high sugar and refined carb diet, right? So we don't really need to worry about that. Toxins. Uh, I'm just here to tell you, we live in a toxic environment. Even when you're buying the best grade A organic that you can buy, it's still leached in there, okay? Our good old friends at Monsanto... <laughs> with the glyphosates, it's everywhere. They have taken, they have went up into Antarctica 
and did the ice plug thing and brought it back and tested it and have found glyphosates up there. Okay, so it's in our environment. It's, it's in the ground, it goes up into the clouds, it rains, so it's everywhere. So besides all the other toxins that we have going on, our good old weed killer is getting into all of us. And uh, high alcohol intake, a weakened immune system, taking oral contraceptives can cause a lot of microbiome problems. And then certainly diabetes and high stress levels. And again, no one has any high stress in today's environment, right? Tiredness and fatigue, talking about the energy. Okay, one of the common symptoms of candida is fatigue or gut imbalance is fatigue. And though they don't have a lot of scientific studies on that, we see it in practice. We see, we see this on, a, on an everyday basis. But uh, the yeast can be associated with nutritional deficiencies of vitamin B6, essential fatty acids, magnesium, just to name a few. So think about that. If you're not getting your vitamin B6 because the candida is causing it not to be absorbed or for whatever reason causing a deficiency in that, do you think your energy levels are going to be down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And when you start taking away essential fatty acids and magnesium, uh, you're really messing with your energy cycles. Low functioning immune system can contribute to being tired and fatigued. There's no doubt about that. And one study even suggests that prolonged candida of the gut may even be a potential cause of what we call chronic fatigue syndrome uh, that people get. Digestive issues, that goes without saying, the health of your digestive system relies heavily on the balance between the good and the bad microbes in there. So they both have to be there. We can't just get rid of all the bad ones, okay? They have to be there in balance. It's like, it's like they work in congruency with each other and have to stay balanced in there. And so when they do get imbalanced, obviously we get digestive issues from constipation, diarrhea, nausea, cramps, bloating, and so forth. Overgrowth is associated with several diseases of the GI tract, a uh, couple Crohn's, ulcerative colitis. And so these diseases that they don't know what causes them or it's genetic, many times can be associated with having the microbiome out of balance. Okay. Come on. There we go. So, what does this all get us to when this is out of balance? Well, how many, has anybody heard of leaky gut? Okay. So, what is leaky gut? Well, we're going to, I'm going to keep it as simple as I can for you. Uh, and this is a great, uh, a great uh, illustration here. But essentially, you normally have really tight junctions between the cells in your gut wall. And this is where all these tiny particles, once it's broken down, is supposed to get in your vitamins and the nutritional uh, components that you need. And they go in and they go through this filter, if you will. And that's what should get into your bloodstream. Well, what happens when this gut gets leaky and inflamed is these tight junctions are opened up and now guess what's getting in here? Larger particles than should be in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Well, when a particle gets in the bloodstream, whether it's a virus, a bacteria, or a food particle that's not supposed to be there, what does the body do with that? It's an immune response. Because the body's like, this is not supposed to be there. I'm going to send out my lymphocytes. I'm going to send out Whatever I need, I'm going to activate the immune system or that cytokine response. And when that's activated and it happens over and over and over again, what does that, what do you call that when your immune system won't shut down and it's running all the time? Autoimmune. So that's where we get into autoimmune situations with this because people have leaky gut and now everything they eat they're becoming allergic to because it's going into the body and the body's creating antibodies for it and going, oh, there's broccoli again. I hate, we're, we're going to kill broccoli. 
okay? Doesn't make any sense, but that's, that's exactly what's happening. Your body doesn't treat it any differently than a virus or a bacteria that's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's how we get into all these autoimmune situations and obviously inflammation, and then we get malabsorption and nutrition deficiency. And here's the leaky gut uh, syndrome cycle. So we get uh, intestinal inflammation and gut, of the gut lining, then we're gonna get malabsorption of the nutrients. This says B12, magnesium, iron. We're gonna get immune response from the body. That creates GI issues and multiple food intolerances or sensitivities. That leads to autoimmune disease, which does what? Inflames the gut lining even more, and around and around and around we go. And that's what's gonna to lead to chronic inflammation of the gut and that's going to eventually lead to chronic disease states uh, down the line. So, like I said earlier, the gastrointestinal tract, home to trillions of microorganisms, 15 to 36 species in there. And each individual is estimated to host at least 160 different species. So, you didn't know that, that you had all that going on in there, right? <laughs> and so, that essentially they're calling that now, it's like a separate organ in your body. We all talk about the stomach, the heart, the lung, the liver, the kidneys being organs, right? Well, the large intestine is an organ, but inside that, what's operating in there is like another organ itself. So just like if your lungs get out of balance, it's gonna have problems, right? So when this organ gets out of balance, then we have major problems going on. Gut microbiota is principally acquired during birthing and matures during infancy. It evolves during childhood and then it starts changing as we age, just as every other organ system in there. And so now we're talking about the aging or slowing down that process so that it's not going at a high rate of speed, right? We're all aging, but how can we, how can we keep that going as slow as possible? So here's what happens. As you're aging, we will get diminished stomach acid production, so we're not digesting our food as well. We get increased gastric pH, so a more basic system. Delayed gastric emptying, okay? We're not, we don't move quite as good, right? We don't move as good walking down the hallway, and inside doesn't move quite as good as it did. So we get decreased gastrointestinal motility, and all of these can negatively affect the microbiota. Now, couple these together with a lifetime of a poor diet, repeated exposures to antibiotics, a lot of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? Okay, aspirin, Tylenol, ibuprofen, and laxatives contribute to a shift in the gut microbiome from diverse and balanced to dysbiotic or whey out of balance and this is just kind of a nice chart that shows over here from birth the weaning period infancy adult age and the golden age and you can see how these different things change bifidobacteria is the good guys okay that's what we want you can see that this spikes up at birth and then stays pretty level here till we start aging, right? And that starts to go down. So we start to lose the good guys, all right? The bacterioids, uh, these go up and stay up there across the board. They're there. Clostridium, that is not a good guy. And it comes up, it stays right there, and then what happens is we start to age. So the bad guys start growing, the good guys start coming down as we age. So that's aging of the gut, if you will, or aging of the microbiome. So what can we do to try to slow down that aging of the gut? And again, that's the gut wall permeability comes into that leaky gut syndrome. And so as we age, we're more and more susceptible to having gut finding inflammation, to having leaky gut. But there's ways we can combat that. And so when it comes to inflammation or anti-inflammation, 
your lifestyle, nutrition, gut microbiota, and its metabolites all are a part of that, okay? So the more inflamed you are, the more you're going to be disabled, more frail, and go into age-related diseases. The more anti-inflamed you are, the more successful aging and the longevity uh, comes into play. So one of the most important keys to healthy aging or slowing down that aging process, that long longevity that we look for is to develop and maintain your immune system that minimizes chronic inflammation okay now inflammation is not a bad thing okay if you sprain your ankle it's going to inflame and it should okay but that's acute inflammation for that injury you have the cytokine response and the body triggers everything to come in to help repair those tissues but when it's chronic it's a bad thing when it's chronic inflammation and it's kind of like uh, uh, you know water is water a good thing yes but what if water comes and stays and just pools there all the time what do we get rot right and so that inflammation is rotting things when it's there uh, chronically and so what we want to do is try to get you like the people that live to a hundred years old and what they have found with that is they have a conserved, a well-conserved immune uh, system, and despite showing some inflammation markers, they avoid or delay major inflammation-driven and age-related diseases because they're controlling this. Here's another great chart. Probably hard for you guys to see, but there's our friend Bifidobacteria again up here in the blue, and other is in red. Look early in life where we're at. The bifidobacteria is where? 60 to 70 percent. As we start growing in that, it's 30 to 40 percent. As we get into later adulthood, 10 percent. And as we get into old age, it's down to 5 percent. So, would it be a good idea for us to look at this and go, how can we possibly keep that blue mark, that bifidobacteria, how can we keep that? at a greater level in there. So that's kind of the, the give you the information on the gut. I know that was, we went through that quickly, but that tells you what's going on in your gut, the microbiome, and how that's affecting possibly leaky gut uh, and your immune system. So what we say about these things is we don't guess, we test. So I'm gonna ask Ms. Taylor to come up now and kind of take you through what the tests are, the SRT that you were asking about, and give us a little bit more information on that. And I think she's even got a couple of patients, uh, the tests from these patients, so she can give you a good idea of what that looks like. All right, Ms. Taylor. Okay. So we do a lot of testing here. We definitely do gut testing, which we'll talk about. We can also do hormone testing, but we're going to talk about three of them tonight. We'll start with our gut test. This is what it starts to look like. We have four pages total, but it looks at different bacteria, the good and the bad on both sides. It'll look at your pathogens. It looks at H. pylori, which is an indicator of ulcers. So we can see that because we definitely want to make sure we're not making that worse when we're balancing the other things because that can happen. People are like, oh, I heard this was good. I'm like, it is, unless this. So we just want to make sure we're not guessing and we're not overdoing one thing and making that worse while we're trying to correct just this one thing and we look at everything. So it'll show you also potential autoimmune triggers over here. We can look at fungus, yeast, and viruses. A lot of viruses live in your gut. We have also found people who have strep in their gut, so recurring strep infections. You don't know it's a strep infection. You're just like, oh, I'm sick. Strep in your gut flares up multiple times a year, making you sick. We can look at parasites, digestive function. We can look at your enzymes, more um, immune responses here. And then these two indicate inflammation. Zonulin is a direct indicator of leaky gut with those pictures that we were looking at with those cells spacing out. That's a major problem. And a lot goes into that, which is why we want to make sure we're getting this across of how important this is. This is the leaky 
This is the gut test? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We also do food sensitivity testing, and it'll show you pictures like this indicating how severe your reaction is, and whenever we get this back, we walk you through it, specialize it for you, tell you like, hey, this one's super bad for you, whereas this one's only kind of bad for you. It looks into 208 different food sensitivities. It also looks into several different inhalants, so we can look at the different um, like weeds and things, which are obviously hard to avoid, but depending on how severe your allergies are and what your sensitivities look like, we can also give you support there. This is important because everything here is causing inflammation. We've talked about how inflammation is the cause of everything, so we wanna decrease the inflammation you're willingly putting into your body and making things worse. So, like the asparagus, this person is sensitive to red snapper. Fish is good, you get omegas from fish, but also the tilapia. We don't wanna be making anything worse. Mm -hmm. So, once we get these back, it's pretty easy to go through and we'll give you like a specific diet for you. We'll help you set up a rotation diet, make sure we're giving your body a break from everything and then we can start introducing it back slowly for you. It also shows us mold. Oh, and on this one up here, candida. So we can see like direct indicators from both of these tests, what your candida, what your fungus levels, what your yeast levels look like, and the sensitivities to that. Here is Dr. Todd being our example for the SRT. So, you get hooked up, he has little leads on his hand, the system runs through a bunch of different frequencies. So it's kind of like an ECG or a lie detector test. We read the electrical frequencies in your body and that gives us another way to look at the picture of your health. So this test is gonna be more of a how you're currently reacting right now. We can test external stressors, we can also test internal stressors and it's just another way so that we can make sure we're getting the full picture of your health situation so that we're not missing anything and getting you the most specialized care for your specific case. There are definitely things that your body needs to help balance it. We talked about how the toxins decrease your absorption. These are some of the key nutrients needed for your gut to function completely. Healthy vitamin D levels help decrease colon cancer says a lot right there. Cancer is pretty prevalent in our situation, so we just want to make sure that your gut is not decreasing your vitamin D levels so that you're less likely to get colon cancer. Magnesium, if the bad bacteria in your gut is pulling magnesium from your other cells, the rest of your body can't function optimally, therefore you can't heal optimally, so you, it's a vicious little cycle right there. So we just want to make sure we're fueling your body correctly and properly and completely. Basically, when it comes to diet, we want to make sure we're reducing the food sensitivities, giving you the plan that's best for you, and then we want to kill the bad guys, replace it with the good guys, and heal that wall in your gut so that you can move forward with a healthier life. So there are some different eating things, eating diets in here often carbohydrates are just going to feed the bad stuff in your gut so we cut that out a lot depending on how severe your tests are we definitely want to stick to the better options for our carbs sometimes fermented foods are not as good as we think um, so we just want to make sure we're getting the right kind of prebiotics in there as well which again we go over with you specifically we don't expect you to just like know all of this all on your own the yeast and the candida feed off of sugars and sweetness, sweeteners and carbs, so we want to make sure we're limiting those, getting those, the good quality carbs in, not the refined carbs. And often we avoid cheese due to the mold content, and often mushrooms are suggested to be avoided as well. Mm -hmm. But again, we just want to make sure we know what your situation is so we can help you move forward in the correct direction for you and your individual health. Just some stuff to take into thought for yourself as you go home, what your diet currently looks like, how you're eating, what types of foods you're putting in, and the percentages of the foods 
that you're eating. This list changes every year, but basically it has to do with how severe the chemicals used for each food is. Usually it's the stuff that you eat the skin of, um, but it does update literally every year. So this is this year's Dirty Dozen. So those are the ones that are gonna be like the most problematic for you if you're not getting those organic. So even if you're on a strict budget, always make sure you're getting the Dirty Dozen of the year as organic and clean. Make sure you're washing all of your foods to get all of that off before you put that in your body. And the next step is heading in the right direction for your <laughs> health, which Dr. Todd's gonna come back and talk about that for us. Okay, thank you, Taylor, I appreciate that. And so, um, what, what we find is that even when people are eating the good foods, as I said earlier, you might have seen on, on there, I know when my wife Marcy did her first food sensitivity test, she's a much healthier eater than I am. And so, I mean, she's eating her almonds and she's eating all of her vegetables, her broccoli and asparagus and things like that. And a lot of these foods just lit up as causing inflammation for her. Mm. So even though almonds may be a great protein source and you know you're using almond butter instead of regular butter uh, and whatever the case might be, that might be inflaming your system terribly. And you're sitting there thinking, I'm eating healthy. Why do I feel so bad? Why, is my, why am I bloating? All I had was almonds and lettuce for dinner. Uh, another one, uh, Dr. Miletus. Uh, he's a naturopath, kind of a famous naturopath that we work with. Uh, he's out in Oregon. And uh, his son, uh, in his teenage years, was saying, Dad, when I, when I eat salads, I don't feel good. And he said, me being the scientist that I am, said, it's good for you, eat it. They ran the food sensitivity test, and guess what he was sensitive to? Lettuce, of all things. Now, you would never think lettuce mm -hmm. could possibly be one of those <laughs> allergy-type uh, foods, right? but it was for this kid. And so they had to do some things to correct that. The SRT, the stress response testing, we also uh, look at uh, the, uh, the frequencies that go in. And so we can run thousands of different stressors through your system to see what your body is reacting to. And we can help calm your body down from those stresses to help it handle them a little bit better. And then, as she said in the stool test, or the gut test, if you will, then the pathogens, the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, the candida, everything that we can find out from there really helps us formulate the next step, if you will. The gut test is the stool test. The gut test and stool test are the same thing. Okay. Now we have other tests, we have the organic acids test. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody that's really severe, we're also gonna do uh, maybe an H1C, H1AC test yeah. for blood sugar because if they're having blood sugar handling problems, that's going to create an issue. Uh, if they're under a lot of stress, we'll do a cortisol test to see if their cortisol is elevated because that can be causing a lot of imbalance in the gut. Yeah. So we really have to look at the cause, if you will, not treat the symptoms. Just like in chiropractic, we look for the cause, not not treating the symptoms. We can give a pain mm -hmm. pill all day for pain, and it may help the pain, but if the cause is still there, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Same thing with this, uh, a thyroid malfunction. If it's, if it's a gut microbiome problem, we can treat the thyroid till the cows come home, yeah. and it's not gonna make a difference because we're missing the cause. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we look for. So between the SRT testing, all the other blood testing, uh, gut testing or stool testing, uh, we can really find out where you're at and then we can customize the program for you. As I said, we have people come in and you think, oh, I just, I've been taking pro probiotics for, for two, three years, two, three years. And what do we find out? They have too many friendly bacteria. <laughs> Okay, and so we have to say stop taking the probiotic right now. Normally probiotics are great, but you've got to stop right now. We've got to let this get back into balance. So it's really customizing that and like she said, finding 
uh, somebody very close to me has a chronic strep infection in their gut. And it explained a lot about why this keeps popping up, popping up, popping up. And we're like, you know, you're healthy. You've got a great immune system. What is going on? Well, uh, chronic, chronic strep in the gut is going to keep rearing its ugly head, so to speak. So the next steps uh, for anybody that's interested in this is to come in, see Ms. Taylor, schedule an appointment with us, and uh, we will be looking at doing a, an SRT pre-scan if you've never had a scan before. The pre-scan just gives us a, a quick overall look to see are there systems in your body that are, that are struggling. And then obviously the testing, uh, we may do the gut test, we may do an organic acids test, uh, we, may be, we may do the uh, food sensitivity test, but it'll be just depending on you and what, you, what you've got going on. So we want to try to zero in on the most effective thing for you at the, at the start of it. And so for being here tonight, uh, Ms. Taylor will hand these out before you go home, but we put together a certificate, a gift for you. And she'll give you a couple of them, so there may be a loved one or friend that you're thinking of while we went through this. But it'll give you $100 off towards the pre-scan and or any of the diagnostic testing that we do. And that'll, that's our gift to you to give you $100 off of that to come in and find out where it's at. And if we run all the tests and everything's beautiful, then you can go home and say, Yahoo, uh, I'm great. Uh, but in all likelihood... <laughs> In all likelihood, because of what we eat, uh, you know, I try to eat, I'm a meat eater, I'll, I'll, I'll confess. So I'm good, I'm, I'm low on my carbs, but uh, I, I don't eat enough of the good carbs. But uh, I try to eat organic, organic chicken, beef, whatever it is. And I do that on a regular basis while I'm at home. But guess what? I travel for work a lot. Mm -hmm. And when you go traveling and you're going to the hotels and airports and stuff like that, well, you either go on a fast for a week <laughs> or if you're going to eat while you're there, you're going to get some of these, you know, foods. And I, I'm so, if I get whatever it might be, chicken there, it's not going to be organic at the hotel. And if it's not organic, guess what? They, they've been eating Roundup, these chickens, <laughs> the grains. Or whatever they're eating is full of Roundup, and so the glyphosates, I'm getting that in there, so that's affecting my gut microbiome uh, just because I'm not eating clean, as people would say. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that uh, we need to get retested uh, fairly often. I, I know some doctors they'll they'll test they'll test once a year, even though they're some of the healthiest people I know and have the greatest diets I know they'll test yearly just to see where where it's at and kind of monitor it. Kind of mm -hmm. like going in for your physical once a year or your standard blood test once a year just to see where, where things are at, but it's that important to it. Yeah. So that's the next step. We'll get that uh, to you. And with all that being said, uh, that's the end. <laughs>